All right, guys, welcome to the first video. Uh, for this one, I think we're going to do a little bit of a, you know, look kind of behind the scenes of the brewery. Uh, that's the business that we own. Um, you know, COVID uh, it's not been too kind to us, but let's go uh, get across town and make some beer and, you know, kind of see what goes into that. Now, this one is going to be kind of a real special beer that um, is going to be real different than a lot of other things you're going to find. So, Join us on this one and let's see what we're going to do. And that is some of our malts we'll be using the bulk of those today for the brew. We're going to make some beer. Now there will be a little bit of sounds, not much I can do about it, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Oh man, look at it go. If I turn that rake on, which is what that portion here is, basically it's just a big mixer. If I turn it on, it's going to squeal real bad, so I'll wait to do that until after I kind of give you guys, you know, a look at what's going on. Oh, she's a going. I'm gonna turn the squeal on, so be ready. Maybe there it goes. But that's all the squeal is. It's just the motor that moves the rakes. Ooh, look at it go! Didn't show you guys putting the stuff in there because it's a little messy, and I needed two hands. So the grain's been mashing oh, about an hour or so now. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little try. All it is right now is basically a super sweet liquid. So, if we hit this right, it should end up tasting kind of like a muffin. Okay, here we go. It'll be real hot. Not bad. It tastes pretty much like a muffin. Okay, so our mash... Hold on a minute. That's better. Our mash has been going for bad six hours at this point. Normally, you know, this is a hour to hour and a half thing. Uh, we're trying with something a little different, some kind of old school techniques from way, way, way back in medieval times uh, for this beer. So, just kind of curious what we're tasting like now. Uh, if I hit everything right, it should be tasting eh, kind of muffiny. So, let's uh, let me get in here. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say it's muffiny. Uh, so what we're going to do now is just leave this sit overnight. Like I said, normally mashing, which is, uh, I think it would kind of like making tea, like you would seep your tea. Normally about an hour to maybe hour and a half. So the, with this, we're going to try something a little different. Uh, basically, we're going to let it go for 24 hours, uh, not controlling the temperature. Normally you control the temperature. Uh, with this one, though, we're not going to control the temperature. Just kind of see where it takes us. Uh, so I will be back in the morning to check on this. Good morning, everyone. We're going to go over and check on the wart, see kind of how it did overnight. Uh, we still have eh, just a couple hours before it's been 24 hours, but that'll give us a chance to get everything cleaned up. But first, I need some coffee. Hi, welcome to Scooters. Can I get you started for our new Maple sandwiches today? All right, let's get, let's get everything turned back on and have a little look, see, and taste. Okay, so we got everything turned back on. We got here, let's open her up. Have a little taste, see what we're dealing with here. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Ah, so that's the wart, basically that's just a real sticky, uh, like water tea type solution. This is before uh, it boils and before the, the yeast get to it to, you know, eat it up, turn it into beer. Uh, so let's go ahead and have a little taste here. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Tastes a bit like a bran muffin. So uh, I'd say we hit what we were aiming for. And we lost a little over 30 degrees overnight. So now what we'll do is we'll get this over to our boil kettle. Get it boiling, help break those sugars down to something the yeast can eat easier. Um, you know, and while that's going for an hour plus, I will go ahead and get everything else cleaned and ready to go. It's all loud, boring work. Um, a lot of heavy duty chemicals so probably won't record most of that because you know who likes watching cleaning for the most part um, other than that let's go uh, do our coffee and our um, not cinnamon roll whatever roll they call it the um, formalicious roll okay so that's what we got um, as you can see I already <laughs> drank some of the soda or uh, soda some of the uh, coffee but let's see what we got going in here 
so yeah, she, she, you know, 100% correct, as I knew she would be. It looks like the same base bun as their cinnamon roll. Feels like it. Um, I think that's caramel on there, though. Yeah, it's basically caramel. Um, so it's more or less a caramel cinnamon roll, so cinnamon roll without any uh, icing. So let's give this a taste. All right, guys, here we go. It's, uh, it's got a fork. I don't have a knife, so it might be a little... Harry, well, that's the inside. We don't want the inside. Okay, so that's what we got. Not bad, but it's a little dry without the icing. Um, definitely, if it had icing, I'd go ahead and get it again, like a caramel icing. Um, as it sits right now. I don't know if, if you like like a dry cinnamon roll with no icing it's fine um i think in the future though i'll just stick with the cinnamon roll all right guys let's probably go ahead and specify for those of you that don't know uh, where i stopped what that is it's a place called scooters um the way i like to explain it is basically it's somewhere between uh like a dunkin donuts and a starbucks so you know it's not bad coffee uh it gets you you know gets your job done in a pinch or there are better coffee spots around yeah but you know, like I said, get it done in the pence. I also don't have a big long line. It's usually uh, a lot cheaper. Um, but like I said, yeah, it's just kind of somewhere between like a Dunkin' Donuts and a Starbucks. Yeah, sorry everyone. There's not a whole lot I can do about the sound right now. It just kind of is what it is. We got the pumps going and working. Uh, let me turn the light on so you can see what the wart looks like currently. It's a nice, uh, I mean, the video is not really doing it justice, but it's a nice amber orangey gold color there we go I think that makes it a little easier for you guys to be able to see the color there's that nice kind of golden orange combo I was talking about nice amber finish to it that ladies and gentlemen was a long long day uh, about 13 to 14 hours just going through and double check you know I didn't take some stuff outside uh, I'll make sure everything's turned off before I leave for the night. Oh, man. All right, that looks good. So I guess I, you know, finally get to go home. I don't get to see my kiddo today, but, uh, oh, oh, almost messed up. Got to turn on the, uh, the, uh, whatever, HVAC units. That's the word I'm looking for. Good night. I'm just out of it. Of course, I didn't get to have lunch, so <laughs> we're supper yet, and it's almost 9 o'clock. Uh, other than that, like I said, I think I finally get to go home. So real quick, I thought I might go over because some of you might be going, well, why did it take that long? You already did part of it the night before. And you're right. You're 100% right. Uh, the difference is that <laughs> the supplier has sent us some grain uh, that has been crushed and not cracked. And there's no real way to get around it. So when we use that, it ends up basically forming a cement. Um instead of like what it should form which is just I think kind of like rice uh so when that happens it makes for a very very long day okay so it's the next day obviously i got some cleanup to do because i didn't want to do it all last night uh there's a chance that fermentation could be happening already so we're going to oh oh we're going to check on that she's already fermenting away look at her go all right everybody it's another day we're gonna go check on the beer again make sure it's still doing what's supposed to be doing um then we're going to run over to Kohl's, pick up a couple things. Uh, got a new coffee maker. <laughs> Don't tell the wife, but uh, <laughs> been wanting a Keurig for a long time. This is not a Keurig, though, uh, because I actually bought a Shark for the office, oh, I don't know, probably about a year ago, and it's been really great. And since I have this working from home, I don't need a 12 pot coffee or 12 cup coffee pot here. It's just me that drinks the coffee. So uh, I actually got one of the ones they have that do a couple of different smaller sizes, like a single cup and an extra large cup. So I can actually get some coffee and quit just kind of heavy blinking at, you know, 9 in the morning. Um, oh, there goes UPS. And like I said, we're also going to swing by the brewery, do a couple of things there before tonight. Uh, this will probably be the last little chunk I film for this week, simply because I have to work the weekend at the brewery and there's... I doubt anything going on that people would want to see there. If for some reason you want to, let me know. But it's just kind of pouring beer, talking with people, and running a cash register. So it's 
you know, on that, that side of it, there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff that happens. Uh, nothing that, you know, you wouldn't get probably in a lot of your own jobs. Okay, so we just pulled in. We're going to clean up a bit of the vets specials that was going on from yesterday. Uh, we're also going to get in there and check on our two beers we got in the fermenters. All right, everybody. So we're going to check on our Imperial Maple Oatmeal Stout right now. It's been there for a while uh, with it being as high alcohol content as it is. It takes a minimum of two months, if not three, to get to where it's really drinkable. So we're going to check on the flavor of this. It's been there for about seven weeks now, so it should be getting pretty close. Uh, the other guy back here that you might hear bubbling uh, is the one we actually brewed earlier this week. So that's that very experimental brew that we're doing uh, using a lot of old world brewing techniques. The biggest one was that 24 hour mash. Uh, so before we do anything, always gotta make sure you sanitize. If you're doing anything with beer or wine or anything of the like, sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. I cannot stress that enough. If you don't, there's a chance you're going to ruin the entire fermenter. Uh, basically, some, you know, the bad stuff in there like lactobacillus or or um, any of the other microbes that you don't want in there could get in there and uh, you're not going to have a fun time and lose everything. So we just squirted this with our sanitizer. We're going to sit here for a little bit and let it kind of kill all the bad stuff. Um, you might notice some here what sounds like some bubbling. You actually are. That's that's this one back here fermenting still. It's a good sign. So it's not fermenting too fast. I was a little afraid it would ferment a little fast. Uh, it's fermenting about a half a day faster than normal. So your normal fermenting time uh, about eh, most people say rule of thumb seven days. Uh, five to ten is what I like to tell people. Kind of shoot for seven. Uh, after about 24 hours. Sometimes 36, you start getting a real heavy bubbling sound, which is the yeast eating all the all the sugars in there and turning it into alcohol. Uh, that's actually what you're hearing now, those bubbles. Hopefully that picked it up for you. Uh, that should have sat long enough. Go ahead and give it a little dry. Now this first bit, it's gonna have some of the sanitizer in it. We don't want that. Well, it tastes real weird. So we're just gonna put it down our floor drain here. Then I'll wash that up with some uh, some water after we're done here. Okay. Oh, one other thing. If you're in these sort of environments, this is very much a do as I say, not as I do type of scenario. Don't wear slides. I don't know why I threw them on. Just, I guess, force a habit. I don't really care for shoes much if I can get by with it. Uh, so I threw slides on. Not a smart thing to do. Okay, so let's see this. As you can see here, real dark color, uh, as it should be. I'll end up being close to probably about 12 to half percent by the time it's all done. I can smell oh, the nice roasted um, stout. So if you've had like a Russian Imperial stout, that's kind of what it smells like right now. However, there's a lot of oatmeal that I can smell and maple. We've got actual maple wood in these things. So a little taste. Yes, I did go spit that down the drain just mainly because I don't like to drink it right off the bat. I like to kind of taste it, clear the area, and let it kind of sit there. Yeah, it's very much a Russian Imperial with some maple. It's going to take another probably, unless the maple really amps up, it's going to take another two to three weeks to get to where I really want it. Now, that said, the maple could just take off and start to take over. Sometimes it does that. But maple is a very subtle flavor uh, when you're extracting it out of wood. So if you push too hard, you're gonna get a lot of weird flavors, and that's what we exactly what we don't want. Now, as always, like I said, sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. So we got done with this. We'll squirt more of our sanitizer out there. Give it a few minutes to kind of drip out here on the floor, then we're gonna hit that with a mop and mop it. Here we go, just to prove that, you know, I do practice with, oh, a new drop. Oh, we forgot to turn that off, that's why. So I'll have to remop that. But we've got that mopped, and we've got the drain cleaned out. And we got one last thing we're gonna do before we go, and that is something called cold crashing. So basically what we're gonna do is get in here to our glycol chiller, and we are going to turn the temperature way down on it. That way it can start to 
you know, everything, all the extra yeast and stuff that's still kind of in solution. Uh, we'll get a chance to cool off, fall out of solution, and I'll start clearing the beer up. Kind of helps the, uh, whoop, come on, there we go. Kind of helps the, the process of being able to get it kegged and get to where we can serve people earlier with it. And normally you do cold crash about 34 degrees, uh, more or less. Let's well, set that one to 38 because it's not our final cold crash. This is just kind of our initial one. We have not actually tried to clarify this yet at all. So don't want to go too cold to begin with. Uh, I don't know if it really makes a difference or not, but I tend to like to do it in a couple different steps. One between 38 to 42, then the other one between 33 and 34 degrees. And that's Fahrenheit in case we have any, uh, uh, I guess we would be in parallel, metric people watching. Okay, so the cleanup, the driving, uh, the testing, all that stuff took up about... 25 30 minutes that means we still have the last half of that hour to go over there get our coffee maker and the pajamas for the kiddo now i won't get to you know use the coffee maker today but i got it in the morning and you know the kind of the way i look at it if you guys are curious at all is i could go out to like starbucks or something and uh you know spend six seven bucks a day on coffee or i could just go by the coffee maker in a matter of 10 days it pays for itself and then everything past that i'm I don't want to say I'm saving money, but it's not costing near as much. So let's go pick up the coffee maker, uh, pick up the pajamas for the kiddos so we can make sure she has pajamas and a new book for Christmas Eve. Now, granted, that's still a month and a half off, but I'm usually done with my Christmas shopping back in like August, and with it being 2020, uh, it didn't quite happen. But like I said, let's go pick up our coffee maker. Uh, maybe we'll get home and take a look at it. I didn't think we had any rain in the forecast till Saturday, but it sure does look like it's getting ready to rain. There it is. Go get our coffee maker and uh, hopefully get in and out before it starts raining. There she is. Normally uh, about $190, but Kohl's was running a special on it. And they also gave me another percentage off. And then I also had some cold cash from a vacuum cleaner I just had to buy. So I ended up getting it for it was like $62 and some change. So like I said, 10 days, it, it'll pay for itself. And then the rest of the coffee is a lot cheaper. Here's the jammies. Oh, can't quite see them because I got all these papers in the way. Hold on, let's see if I can. Give me just a minute here. Oh, good night. Come on. And of course, there's another tag under it. But it's Grinch, says I'm only here for the presents. Ought to work for a three year old pretty good. And there is one thing that's true about Missouri uh, that weather does change on a dime. I mean, you can see here, went in, it was dark, looked like it was going to rain, and now there's few clouds in the sky, but it's mainly blue skies. So just got home uh, with about two minutes to spare before my lunch hour is up. So that was good timing. Uh, I'm going to take the coffee maker inside and probably get in trouble for buying it. But, you know, we'll find out. Uh, then maybe later tonight I will get the kitchen clean so I can actually, you know, it, it's, it's messy. It needs cleaned up right now. It's not like food and stuff everywhere. It's just a little cluttered. So uh, I just need to get it clean. Then we have some coffee in the morning. All right. So there we go. Uh, we're going to try this. New coffee we got the other day. It's the Jacksepticeye one. I could do a really bad Jacksepticeye impersonation, but, you know, why bother? Uh, it smells pretty good. I don't know if it'll quite be dark enough for my liking, but we're going to give it a try. I'm not going to turn this on while I'm recording because it is very loud and you guys will uh, not thank me for it. Okay, all done. Let's get that off of there. That yeah, smells a little better now that it's ground. Let's get this in the coffee pot and see what it does. Okay, so pro coffee tip. Don't use a cold coffee mug or it's going to make your coffee real cold off the bat. Just pre-warm it with some warm water. Keep your coffee warm, unless you're wanting like iced coffee. Then, you know, do your thing. Uh, we need to pick our selection. There we go. Smells a lot different now.
Ooh, that's hot. It's really hot. Maybe I should have left the mug cold. Maybe it wasn't a pro tip. No, 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 I stand corrected. That actually brews, the taste anyway, brews a lot darker than, than how it smells. Hey guys, it's the end of Friday, I think at this point. So I had a couple other thoughts today. Um, I noticed it probably wasn't going to be too much going on. It wasn't a lie, there really wasn't a lot going on. So I'm just doing this as I'm getting ready to bed down for the night. Uh, so the coffee pot didn't get in trouble yet. I was, and I knew my wife looked right at it, and I was, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. I figured she'd at least say something. About five minutes after that, I realized why she didn't, because she knows I have that brand of coffee pot at the office. And a couple weeks ago, I said something along the lines of, well, I guess I could go to the, the office and just bring my coffee pot home because I'm not using it up there for anything. So she probably assumes that's the one from my office. So if she watches this, then I'm not sure <laughs> she'll say something. Um... The other thing, uh, you know, the rest of the weekend's going to be pretty much the same as what I did today. Uh, well, today after I got off of work. So I'll just be at the brewery. There might be something tomorrow afternoon. I doubt it. Um, if there is, I'll go ahead and record it. Let you guys kind of know what's going on. Uh, the other thing, real quick. Yes, I'm sleeping on the couch. I'm not in trouble or anything. I just kind of do this uh, a lot during the wintertime. Uh, because my wife is very cold-natured. So, um... She runs a heated blanket, and it gets too hot in there for me to sleep. So rather than me making her uncomfortable by turning off the blanket, or me making myself uncomfortable by sleeping where it's too hot, I just kind of come out here and sleep. Um, but yeah, it's not bad. Uh, occasionally it does kind of start to hurt a bit, and I'll have to go sleep in there for a day or two and just kind of reset the back. But it's not terrible. Hi, kitty cat. Uh, the other thing... I don't know if you see this. I'll kind of share. <laughs> but um, a couple of years ago, brother-in-law got me a blue Snuggie for Christmas. Because you know, I like hockey. I'm a hockey fan. Got a lot of teams I like. Uh, blues are kind of the home team. That's, I'm actually wearing a Stanley Cup shirt. Um, but uh, it was a Snuggie, and I'm a little on the taller side. Uh, it's you know pretty warm, at least for me anyway. But the problem was, if I, when you put it on, it comes up here like a shirt. I always had a good, oh, I don't know, five, six, seven inches. It wouldn't cover my feet or anything. I'm, I'm about six two. But pro tip for the Snuggies, if you're trying to use them to cover up to, at night and you're smaller, or smaller, sorry, it's too small for you, you're a taller person, flip it around. Put your legs through the armholes because they're big enough, and I've got big legs. They fit right through the armholes, and all of a sudden, you just extended your Snuggie about eight, nine inches. Here, I'll give you a second uh, to take a look at this. Oh, ooh, just flipped it around, but yeah, see? Flipped it backwards. Legs through the armholes. So my feet are covered, my legs are covered, and, you know, if I wanted to, I could pull it way up here over my head. I need to, that's even too high for where it'll end up. So it'll probably be you know, about right there for the night. But uh, like I said, anything interesting happens ooh, this weekend, um, I'll let you know. Probably not going to happen. Uh, next week I'll have a bunch of housework and stuff I'll have to get done. We got the weekend off, so I might take the kiddo um, to go do something. I might take her down to Disney Store. Um, something like that. She's had a pretty rough 2020. I know all of us really <laughs> probably have all throughout the world. Um, but, uh, you know, we started a business. Worst timing ever. But, uh, you know, who'd have known? Um, we had a Husky for nine and a half years. Uh, he got very, very sick this year. We did about everything we could to get uh, try to make him pull through, and it just didn't happen. Unfortunately, about, oh, probably three or four months ago at this point, we did have to uh, to euthanize him to put him to sleep. And uh, our three-year-old, everyone said that she would get over it pretty quick and not even realize anything. And she has just been stuck on uh, Indeed not being here. Um, and, you know, as we all have, it's been pretty rough. Uh, then his cousin, 
which we call her his cousin, uh, my brother, not a dog. Uh, they were born on the same day, same year. Uh, Chocolate Lab Stormy, and she, uh, just a couple weeks ago, she ended up a few months back getting diagnosed with uh, can liver cancer. And I'm pretty sure that's what uh, Indiana had. I think he had spleen cancer. But uh, Stormy got diagnosed with liver cancer, uh, got real bad, and she had to be euthanized a couple, uh, probably two, three weeks ago at this point. Quinn took that pretty hard too, but uh, at least with Stormy, she was kind of prepared for it. Uh, it wasn't just kind of out of the blue with Indy, our, our husky. He uh, was here when she went to daycare, went to preschool. And when she got back, he just wasn't here. Uh, he took a turn for the worse literally that quick. Uh, he had not been eating for a few days. Took it to the vets. They were running a few tests to figure out what was going on. He was just laid down and refused to get up and just couldn't really get up. Um, I don't really know how much more I want to go into that or should go into that for that matter of fact, but uh, I mean, that's kind of sucked. Uh, but there's people that's had it way worse. Um, thankfully, we have been able to continue working through this. Uh, there for the longest time we were going into the office, then they've just sent us home to work from home. Like I said, thankfully we can do that. Um, other than that, uh, you know, we've not had it too terribly bad. Um, but once everything does, I sound like a hockey player, lots of ums and uhs. But once everything does get back to normal, we'll go around, do some stuff around the area. There's not a whole lot to do in comparison to some other places, but, uh, you know, we've got Branson right here. We've got Bass Pro, maybe Wonders of Wildlife. I don't know how much we'll do that. Whoa. Oh, it's the Unis Anis stream. I'm kind of just have that on in the background just to see what they're going to do, because I'm not quite sure that they're going to uh, actually end it. But we'll see what they do. Anyway, um... I got Wonders Wildlife stuff like that, but uh, Johnny Morris, the guy who owns Bass Pro and Wonders Wildlife, um, doesn't really give out a lot of hometown discounts. I know, like for those of you who are familiar with like Disney or Universal, they give Florida residents, California resident discount. We don't really get that here. There's a few shows in Branson that does um, a local discount. So if you live kind of in Springfield or Branson area. You get a discount to the show because they're pretty cheap, but you know, Silver Dollar City doesn't do that. Um, which, in comparison to like Disney or something, they're pretty cheap anyway. Um, but like Johnny Morris, so Bass Pro, forget about it. No, he'll do it maybe one one week or one month a year, if that. If like attendance is low, he'll go ahead and do that to try to bring the locals in. Uh, other than that, not really any place around here does that. Um, but there's a few other. Shops have just opened, like a ice cream, a uh, new ice cream place just opened. Uh, it's like emo themed, if I remember right. There is a soda shop, apparently, like a gourmet soda spot uh, downtown. Maybe we'll go check that out. Um, I will start, like I said, take take the kiddo down there, let her go to the Disney store or something. Um, and then we'll put up a Christmas tree for much longer. That'll be fun. Uh, one of the reasons we hadn't really done it in the past uh, is because of Indy. Uh, we don't want him accidentally knocking it over, being scared of it. And Isis is our cat. She's getting ready to be 14. Hi, Kiki. Uh, so she's a she's an old lady now. She's not too spry. She likes to just kind of sit in laps now, so a tree shouldn't be an issue with her. And to kind of help, you know, we'll just help the kiddo along. Um, Go ahead and put up Christmas tree. She you know, likes doing it. She's done it at Grandma and Grandpa's before. I don't, we just haven't really done it here because we didn't want to take the chance of it getting knocked over or something. But it shouldn't be an issue this year. So I guess you know, if something else interesting does happen tomorrow, well, that's giving me some weird colors. Maybe I should just turn it off for a little bit. It's making me look green. But... Um, if anything interesting does happen tomorrow, we'll all go ahead and film it. Uh, the one after that would be a lot of, probably, like I said, I have a lot of leaves that need mulched. I've got uh, some ceiling to repair. Um, just some little things. For, you know, I need to go to recycling. I need to... 
I said she needs to stop. Thank you. I need, you know, like I said, I need to go to recycling. I need to clean up the house some more. Um, other than, you know, other than that, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. We'll kind of take it as we, as it comes. And then uh, if I don't see you guys, this is the last record this week. Thanks for watching. Yeah, you know the kind of YouTube routine by now, but if not, uh, please subscribe, like, hit the bell notification. Um, and thanks for watching. Until next time.